Hello everyone, I'm Shavana the side and today let's discuss about cancer genes, Lin syndrome and BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations. These are also very important topic from the examination point of view. So let's uh, discuss about a scenario in which a young woman has been referred by her GP because her mother has been diagnosed with endometrial cancer and mother has undergone hysterectomy. Her maternal uncle has been diagnosed with colorectal can uh, cancer and he has also undergone a surgery. Now this woman wants to know about cancer gene tests and if she is tested cancer gene positive, then how can she have a healthy baby as she is also planning to have a family and she's contemplating pregnancy. She wants to know about the risk reducing strategies as well. So let's start counseling this woman. We can tell her that in view of the positive family history, she is at increased risk of having Lynch syndrome and this increases the risk of endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer and colorectal cancer. So first, we need to know whether genetic testing has been done for her mother and uncle or not. If testing has not been done, then first thing we have to do is to refer her mother and uncle to genetic counselor for testing of cancer gene. Now, if genetic test is positive for Lynch syndrome in mother or her uncle, then this woman should also be tested for cancer gene for Lynch syndrome. So we are going to involve genetic counselor in her care. Also, if there is family history of ovarian or breast cancer, in that case, we will also counsel her about testing for BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Now, this woman wants to know how to have a healthy baby if she has been uh, tested positive for the cancer gene for Lynch syndrome. So we know that Lynch syndrome has no effect on fertility. It is an autosomal dominant condition and it can be transmitted to baby in one in two cases. So we will be referring the patient to fertility specialist to discuss about pre-implantation genetic testing. We can tell her in simple language and explain her about the PGT, that she can have a test to baby in which her eggs uh, will be mixed with her partner's semen and resulting embryo will be checked under the microscope and only healthy embryos, at least two such healthy embryos, will be implanted inside her womb. So we are also involving fertility specialists in her care. What about the risk reducing strategies? So we can tell her that simple measures, lifestyle modifications, having healthy balanced diet, keeping healthy BMI between 19 to 25, doing exercise, smoking and alcohol cessation are risk reducing strategies. Also discuss with her about the combined oral contraceptive pill. The pills reduce the risk of endometrial and ovarian cancer. And this reduced risk stays even after stopping the pill. Regarding the Mirena, it reduces the risk of endometrial cancer. What about Tab Aspirin? Now this is something very important. It reduces all types of cancer associated with Lynch syndrome. Discuss with her about the side effects of aspirin. If she is taking aspirin for long duration, then there is risk of gastritis, gastric ulcer, that is a stomach ulcer. She can have raw area in her stomach. There is a risk of indigestion and heartburn as well. Aspirin reduces risk of endometrial cancer more in obese as compared to non-obese women. It should be started from 18 years of age. Trials are still ongoing to determine determine the best dose for cancer prevention. What about surveillance and screening methods to reduce the risk of endometrial and ovarian cancer? So we can discuss with the woman about ultrasound scan to assess the ovaries and uterus, the blood test for the tumor marker, that is CA125, which can be raised in cancer ovary, combination of both ultrasound and CA125. Endometrial biopsy can be done by people or hysteroscopy as an outpatient procedure, but there is risk of pain, infection, bleeding, and uterine perforation. Also, hysteroscopy is an invasive procedure. Counsel the woman that still there is no evidence that all these above surveillance and screening methods are helpful in detecting cancer early, and they're not recommended yet. What about colorectal colonoscopy surveillance? Yes, this is recommended. And this is done by the colorectal or bowel surgeon. 
risk reducing surgery. So we need to consult her about the total laparoscopic hysterectomy and bilateral salpingoforectomy. This is offered after her family is complete. The timing of surgery is gene specific, usually done by the age of 40 years. As after the age of 40 years, there's an increased risk of endometrial cancer. The surgery can be done with or without colorectal cancer and we need the input of the bowel surgeon. What about the risk of surgery? So in general, there is some risk of pain, infection, bleeding. And with the laparoscopy procedure, there is risk of damage to the internal organs like bowel, bladder, and blood vessel. And all the precautions will be taken to minimize these risks. In her case, there are some specific risks like removal of ovaries and uterus, like with removal of ovaries and uterus, she will need artificial reproductive technique if she wants to conceive in future. She will be having menopausal symptoms like hot flushes and night sweats because of lack of estrogen. Also, there will be adverse effect on bone and heart health and on sexual health because of lack of estrogen. We will be counseling about offering hormone replacement therapy as she has been hysterectomized, so we can offer estrogen replacement therapy in the form of transdermal patches. This woman will need MDT care involving the consultant or expert gynecologist, genetic counselors, fertility specialist, colorectal surgeon, clinical psychologist, counselors, and GP. There are some important points to remember regarding the Lynch syndrome. As per NICE, all women diagnosed with endometrial cancer should be screened for Lynch syndrome. The risk of endometrial cancer in Lynch syndrome is 3% and risk of ovarian cancer is 1-2%. to However, prognosis of endometrial cancer associated with Lynch syndrome is very good. 10-year survival rate is more than 90%. It is, uh, well, the most common and lethal cancer in Lynch syndrome carrier is colorectal cancer. Women with Lynch syndrome should be reviewed from 25 years of age by an expert gynecologist. What about the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations? They increase the risk of cancer of ovary and breast. Now, these genes, they provide protection against ovarian and breast cancer. With mutation in these genes, this protection lost. So, if the woman is tested positive for uh, the BRCA genes, then we can discuss with her about the risk-reducing surgery and the risk of surgery as well. We can offer laparoscopic risk-reducing bilateral salpingoophorectomy after the family is complete. It reduces the risk of ovarian cancer in 90% and breast cancer in 40 to 50%. Regarding the age for surgery, for the BRCA1, surgery is offered between 35 to 40 years of age because the risk of ovarian cancer increases by 40s in BRCA1 mutation. In BRCA2, the age of surgery is 45 years. Also, we can counsel about risk reducing bilateral mastectomy. It reduces the risk of breast cancer by 90%. Then again, discuss with her about the risk reducing strategies, the same strategies which we have discussed earlier, simple measures, lifestyle modification, keeping healthy BMI between 90 to 25, stopping smoking and stopping alcohol doing exercise. What about the combined oral contraceptive pill? Yes, they reduce the risk of ovarian and endometrial cancer, but there is slight increase in the risk of breast cancer with the pills. Pregnancy and breastfeeding, they are protective factors. Discuss about the breast screening, which can be done by mammography or ultrasound, usually done by the age of 40 years. In women with BRCA mutation, it is done by the age of 30 years. Also tell her about self-examination of breast. Counsel the woman that if cancer gene test is positive, risk of developing cancer is more, but this does not mean that you will definitely have a cancer. So that was all about the cancer genes, Lynch syndrome, and the BRCA mutation. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. And do give a thumbs up if you liked the video. I shall be uploading more videos from examination point of view. 
do like and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Keep studying and all the best for the next exam. Thanks again.